Hi there, my name is Daniel and I work for Pytania. Today we're going to be look at, looking at adding a plugin to your Rust server using Pterodactyl. When you first set up Pterodactyl, you have the choice to enable UMOD and Oxide. We did not do that in our actual Rust server setup on Pterodactyl. We left it as vanilla. So our server has no ability to add plugins or modifications to the server outside of all of the vanilla commands and variables that you can define. Luckily enough, Pterodactyl gives us the option to automatically download and update Oxide from the Pterodactyl startup commands themselves with this option here, Oxide mod. By default, this was set to zero, so I've just left it there. However, today we're going to be enabling it. Once that's enabled and your server is off, you can simply hit start. What this will do is it will remotely download all of the requirements from Oxide and enable them on your server. So we'll start that quickly just so that we can grab all the files and folders that we need, as well as some config files that we want to change just to make sure that we have a better performance. So let's take a look at UMOD quickly. Now UMOD is a basic system that allows you to add plugins and modifications to your server using a custom framework. There are thousands, literally thousands. There is 1,329 plugins available just in the Rust section alone on UMOD, not including the 149 that are available under Universal, which means they would also work for Rust, as well as Hurt World, Seven Days to Die, Reign of Kings, and The Forest. But this isn't the only plugins that you can get. There are tons of websites that allow you to, so let's do loan.design. You also have Code Fling, and you have Chaos Code, and there are many, many more. These are just a few to name. Loan Design is also a really good website for finding maps as well as plugins. So we can go to the plugin section, they have a premium and a free section. And you have Code Fling, which also has an absolute ton of plugins themselves as well as Chaos Code, which focuses more on paid plugins. A little bit uh, rough to get through the website, but once you actually get there, some of these plugins are absolutely insane. Probably every server that you have ever played in the modded section utilizes Skinbox, which can be found on the Chaos Code website. So today what we're going to do, now that we've enabled the Oxide system, we'll see we have a new folder that's been created called Oxide. The one change that we're going to make here in the oxide.config.json file is we're going to change plugin watchers from true to false. Now, not everybody needs to do this. I'm doing this solely because I'm running this on a very low tier machine that cannot handle auto compiling plugins or making changes to plugins when the server is active. It will crash the server. And in most cases, a lot of people will disable this because if you're making a change to a plugin when you do that the compiler will try to reload it for you right then and there and in some cases can lead to the server crashing or if you know that the code is not going to work it will just unload the plugin that is working actively and will just cause it to error out which in some cases is not what you want because um, if you have players that are active on your server and it's doing that they're not going to be able to utilize this functionality. So I'm just going to change plugin watchers from true to false and then I'm going to hit save. Now, what we need to do after that is hit restart on our server because we've made a change to Oxide and it's one of the only things that can't be reloaded whilst the server is active. Everything else in terms of the plugins can be reloaded whilst the server is active. So whilst that's done it, we're going to head back over to the plugin section and we are going to look for a plugin that we can grab today. A nice and simple and easy one. Tell you what, let's do... No, let's stick to Vanish. I already downloaded Vanish for another project, so we'll just focus on Vanish for today. Vanish is a really strong administrator tool. It basically allows you to go invisible in front of players and other admins 
so that you can just spectate and fly around and see what all of your players are up to really really strong pretty much every server utilizes this including some of the official servers so that their admins aren't always visible to players whilst they're flying through the air so this is a incredible plugin that pretty much every server uses so what we're going to do is we're going to head over to files oxide plugins and we're just going to hit upload and choose vanish.cs so now the plugin is there because we disabled uh, plugin watchers, the plugin isn't going to auto compile and load itself. So, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to utilize oxide commands. So, o.load vanish. Um, what that is going to do is it's going to work to load that plugin into the server for us and compile it and create the folder and file structures that it requires. So, load a plugin vanish. We'll head back over to files, oxide config. And now we have our config file that we can make adjustments to if we wanted to. By default, I'm not going to make any changes to this, but this just gives you a rough idea of how the plugins work. Most plugins will only have three things, a language file, a config file, and the actual plugin itself. However, some more of the, the high tier plugins like N teleportation, which allows you to define home systems for players, as well as the ability for players to teleport to outpost and band it and requesting teleporting to other players. They also will have a data folder and file, which will generally be located in this folder here, data. So we also have a vanish players.json, and what this does is it will just record the players that are currently in vanish. Not too useful, but if you do have a need for it, that's where it will be. We will also have a language file called vanish.json, which allows us to make modifications to the way that it would appear in chat. So by default, when you vanish at the moment, the chat response will be vanish colon and it will be in orange and it will show enabled and the same going backwards, but disabled. We're not going to be making changes to this either. We're going to focus solely on the grouping system and making sure that you as an admin have access to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the server address. I'm going to head over and connect to the server. And right now we are going to run o.show groups. So the show groups command basically just shows the default group as well as any groups that you have created afterwards. Right now we have an admin group and that is what we want to make sure that we are being placed into as an admin for our server. But right now we're not even an owner of our server. So we are going to copy the Steam64 ID from me connecting to the server and we're going to add owner ID. Owner ID. And then we're going to server.writecfg so that it saves it on a restart. And env.time9 so we get it into daytime because who likes nighttime, hey? And then all we're going to do is I'm going to press C and now I can play. Mm, surprisingly, the env.time. Hmm. Oh, there we go. I guess it didn't like me running it in game, but it liked it for the console. So now that we're in game and we're an owner ID, we still aren't quite done yet. We also need to put ourselves in the administrator group. So o dot user group add Steam ID admin, which is the group. You can also see its breakdown. So if I do o dot user group add, it should give you the exact example as it needs. So oxide.user group add or remove then the username which can be the name of the player or it can be their steam64 id and then the group name so if i do o.show user and then the steam id you can now see that we are in the default user group and the administrative user group never remove anybody from the default user group unless you know what you're doing because if you do certain functionality that you've assigned to the default group permissions to it that player will then lose access to them should they actually need it or want it. Most servers will have things like Furnace Splitter or Quick Smell on the default user group. And if you remove somebody from it, they won't have access to it unless you put them into another user group that does have that active. However, anytime that player leaves your server and joins your server, they will be put straight back into that default user group because of the setting that is defined here. So there's no real reason to remove them from it, okay? Now, we're still not quite done. We're now in the admin group. 
we have our own ID, we know that our admin permissions work, but I still can't vanish. It's not going to let me do it. You do not have permission. So what we're going to do is we're going to head back over to the Vanish plugin. Now, some plugins will have permission system assigned to them. In this case, it has allow, unlock, damage, and permanent. Permanently being in Vanish, the ability to damage people. Unlock, which is the ability to open anything that is locked to that player. So obviously, if you have a code lock as an admin, you won't know that code, but this will allow you to open it anyway. And the ability to go in, uh, in Vanish and come out of Vanish as well under allow. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy. So if you click the actual title, it'll copy it to the clipboard. We're going to head back over to our console and we're going to grant those permissions to the admin user group. O dot grant group. So I'm going to show you the example here. So it's oxide dot grant group or user. You can assign users permissions specifically. I tend to do it by groups because it's easier to micromanage a group rather than a single individual if you have hundreds to manage. You can do the name or you have the Steam64 ID and then the permission. So o.grant group admin and then the permission. And then we're going to head back and we're also going to copy unlock o.grant group admin vanish to unlock. And now if we do vanish, we can see that I'm now in vanish. So it's said in chat vanish enabled and we also have the little ghost icon to show that we're in vanish. And if you're a little bit on the ball about adding keybinds, you can also bind P vanish. And there we go. You can just freely use your keyboard to go in and out of vanish. In some cases, you can also type slash vanish. However, not all plugins have chat commands available. Some don't even have console commands. So you will have to check the configuration, check the permissions, make sure that you are signing the permissions correctly. There are some really strong add-ons out there for permission management in game. I will cover that in a future guide. And that pretty much covers it. At the bottom of this guide, there will be some more instructions and a walkthrough on how to do this in a text-based system, as well as if you do have struggle along the way, you can always contact us via Discord, live chat, email or opening up a support ticket we're available 24 7 including the weekends yes i said 24 7 so please don't hesitate to let us know if you are having any issues we will always work to help you even though bitania is an unmanaged service we are always ready to be there for you have a good day thank you very much let's just stop that there we go bye now